Mr. Barnum. Today's lesson is on Hess's Law. Hello everyone. Today let's talk about Hess's Law. There's this question. How do we get the enthalpy changes for reactions that we don't actually do? Think about this reaction here, magnesium oxide for example. You might remember the reaction. Here's a video. Look at all that heat energy being released there. Uh, tons of light, some high UV content, certainly some vapor and so on. And you might ask yourself, geez, you know what, that doesn't look like it fits very well in my calorimeter. How can we measure the enthalpy change for this reaction? Well, of course it's very hot, requires oxygen gas, like I said it has a very high UV content, and for a number of other reasons you might say, you know, it's not that suitable to put in this coffee cup calorimeter. So how we get its enthalpy change? Well, it took this guy, Germain Hess, to discover this principle, and it was named from him. The idea is this, that enthalpy is a state function. Therefore, the condition or state of the system is what matters, and not how you got there. Well, <laughs> you might wonder, why? Why is it that how you got there doesn't matter? Well, it's the conservation of energy coming back yet again. Imagine this example system here. If you had some constituent elements, and uh, form it together in a synthesis reaction to make a compound. And let's imagine that that enthalpy change in the forward direction were 200 kilojoule per mole. It's negative, this reaction is exothermic. And say you had a reverse enthalpy going back the other direction of, say, an endothermic reaction of 198 kilojoule per mole. Well, if that were the case, you would do the forward reaction, get 200 kilojoules, then run the reverse one, pay only 198, have a bonus of two kilojoules left over, and just do this over and over. Clearly, that's not permitted. The conservation of energy law forbids it. The way you could state the law is this. If you had a reaction and you write it as sum of other reactions, the enthalpy change of the one you're looking for will be equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes of the other ones that add up to it. So I guess the next question's got to be, why should that be? Well, here's a reaction system. And this is the one we're talking about, and it's coming up in lab. So let's have a look and see how this might work. Remember that these coefficients here are moles. So what we're looking for here is the enthalpy change per mole of magnesium. So the first two reactions will get this information from lab data, and the third one with the hydrogen oxygen gas will look up the data. So our equation four can be made by some combination of these other equations, one, two, and three. So how do we combine them and actually uh, get this uh, to work? How do we combine equations one, two, and three to get equation number four? Well, let's let equation number four show up down here at the bottom. And uh, there it is. Remember, this is the one whose enthalpy change we're looking for. And uh, we'll go back here and get our first equation. We'll see that magnesium oxide is here a reactant. We need to be a product, so we'll have to reverse it. So we'll reverse the first reaction here, having magnesium oxide as a product. Just get in the reactants here. We'll write them in. And there's the magnesium oxide showing as a product. And so when we get uh, the enthalpy change here, we'll just have to use the opposite of this one that we uh, do above. Magnesium in the second reaction is shown as a reactant, and that's what we want. So we'll write the second reaction here in the forward direction as shown with magnesium as reactant. It's delta H will be whichever the delta H is for that thing that we find in the lab doing calorimetry. In the third reaction, the oxygen gas is going in the right direction. It's a reactant, and we'll use it just like that. So we'll write the third reaction down in the forward direction. We just write that one down and this enthalpy change here we're going to look up. So the first one here we'll get from lab, the second one we'll get from lab, and the third one we'll look up. So the sum of these enthalpy changes will give us the enthalpy change for our whole reaction. Before we get too excited, let's just check. These magnesium chlorides cancel. Uh, they don't show up in our overall reaction. That's good. Also, these liquid waters cancel. They don't show up in our overall reaction. That's good. Ooh, balance the hydrochloric acid. Uh, two of those and two of those cancel. They're not in the overall reaction. Uh, so too will remove the hydrogen. And if you look here at the end, we just have the magnesium, the oxygen, and the magnesium oxide. So this actually does work. This sum of reactions will work, and this sum of enthalpies will be the correct enthalpy for the overall reaction. Okay, so here's what makes Hess's law um, so, <laughs> well, anyway, it makes it amazing to me. We're not going to actually do the reactions as written. Uh, in fact, they don't even need to make a realistic sequence of reaction steps. Just get that written down here. Uh, in other words, 
Here's what I really want you to think about. The sequence of reactions that we write down and that add up to our final reaction, they may not be practical or possible or convenient or really anything. But, but here's, here's the, <laughs> back to this, okay? They're not necessarily practical or possible or convenient or really anything to do them. But, and here's the part that really sticks. They must add up properly energy-wise by Hess's law. Because if they didn't, there would be this possibility that the conservation of energy law could be broken. In other words, you might get clever enough to make them work, you see? And if they didn't add up properly, then you would have found a way to break the conservation of energy law. And the law prohibits that possibility Make sense? Even the possibility of breaking the conservation energy law is prohibited by the law. Doesn't the universe kind of surprise you and amaze you? It surprises and amazes me quite a lot. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, let's get back to our uh, example here and see what happens. So uh, can we actually do these reactions and uh, get the enthalpy changed and work out the enthalpy for our overall reaction of uh, the magnesium oxide combustion? Remember, we have to arrange them all and add them all up and add up all the enthalpies and uh, make sure we keep the signs going the right directions and finally get the delta H for our oxidation of magnesium oxide. So uh, we can, of course, don't lose heart, and we'll get our reactions. Here they are from above. And of course, these delta H values are ones we're going to have to go and get. So we look up the third one. It's uh, exothermic, 286 kilojoule per mole. And... Uh, in the lab, we get these other values here, 51 and negative 394. If you add those all up, you get this negative 629 kilojoule per mole uh, number for our overall reaction. And uh, that's, of course, without doing the reaction. We didn't actually put magnesium uh, in a calorimeter and burn it. So, but we did get its enthalpy change. So Hess's law allows us to use the calorimetry results that we can do in the lab to make sequences of reactions that add up to reaction that we can't do in the lab or that we don't want to do, or for any reason might be impractical, and uh, you just add them up algebraically, and those enthalpy changes then also add up. We get the overall enthalpy of the final reaction. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, stay tuned for our next lesson um, on collision theory and reaction mechanism. Thanks, and see you soon. Have a look at the next video in the playlist and stay tuned for our next lesson, Collision Theory and Reaction Mechanism. This is my dad's YouTube channel. It's awesome. So like, comment, and subscribe.